Hey, Viking fans, my favorite nemesis, Colin Coward, strikes again after Thursday night's game. you probably seen it, but let's talk about it next in 3, 2, 1. Gather around, Skull Brothers and Sisters. This is Skull World, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Doc. I'm your host, Dave. You can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook, at Skull World. Make sure you Hulk smash the YouTube algorithm. Okay. Hulk smash in the like button. And ring that bell. What I mean by that is hit subscribe on your phone. Go down. Turn on the notification. That's ringing the bell. Let's go. Let's go. Let's skull. I am here to talk about another awful take by your lamestream media out there. I think that's uh, Andy from Purple for the Wind talks about lamestream media. It's terrible. It's dumb. I. They just they're lazy. They watch. It. They don't even watch the game. They they look at the end score and say, "Hey, he must have been bad." They see four turnovers maybe in the books and don't look to see if they're picks or whose fault they were. Or look at even the play. Um, I even heard crazy things like uh, the touchdown pass to Addison was don't don't give Kirk too much credit. He was hesitating. I'm like, we'll bring that play up and you can tell me what kind of what uh, what your thought process on it. This narrative that Kirk's having a bad start to the year, and and it's just if we got rid of him, it would be it would be successful. Now, or the future would be brighter for us. Basically, people want us to tank so they get the shiny new toy from the college ranks, and you know all these. And and I was again, kudos to me. I did not want to trade up and get a quarterback in this last draft because I thought, hey. We'd have better situation in 2024, and it's looking much better. It's looking deeper. We got quarterbacks we weren't sure were going to be there or stepping up and coming. A, and, and like like uh, Shakiri Sanders, yeah, he wasn't expected to be one of the top guys. Now he just made that even deeper now. So it's looking bright. Give me some kudos. I want them. Throw me my flowers. I'll catch them. Let's go. But, hey, I'm talking about Colin Coward. And I'm gonna bring him up. Let's let's do that. Oh, there's Kirk Cousins. Let's remove him. Let's bring up Colin Cowherd. And you can hear what he had to say about Kirk Cousins after throwing for 364 yards, four touchdowns with no picks. So I think the Kirk Cousins thing, you know, these big TV Thursday night, Monday night, Sunday night standalone games, Kirk Cousins is just bad at them. There's no getting around it. He is just bad. So I he actually won the last three Thursday night games he had uh, had had played in, and he threw very well in all three. You know, overall, he did very well in the three victories we had on Thursday night. We lose on this one, and no one could have watched that game and said, "Oh, it was Kirk Cousins that did that." No, I mean we had Brandon Powell fumble for the first time in his career, according to KOC. We had. You know, we had Justin Jefferson stretch for a touchdown. Would we with three with three timeouts? We would have had the ball at the one yard line. We, they wouldn't have been able to kick a field goal if we ran ran time off the clock. And not, and not to mention, they ran the ball and only threw one pass and got within field goal range and kicked a sixty yard sixty one yarder setting up. I think a personal or franchise record. Um, so that was a 10 point swing. And then we come out that Kirk Cousins doesn't see the blind side. He admits it. He says he didn't see it. Um, you know, you got strip sack started out the second half, but then we go down 20, 27, seven, but we clawed our way back. Big play after big play, big throw after big throw. People said, well, it was garbage time. No, man. Nobody looked at that game. It's like garbage time. It's insane to even think that. I'm gonna bring up I'm gonna bring up one of the plays. Um this is uh this is him getting us, I think, within down to get ready to score, put us within one score. So let me put this up. 
All right. All right. So here's Kirk Cousins. I don't know if you remember the 2018 throw in the Packers game or the or late in the game against the Bills, not the Justin Jefferson crazy catch, but the other one where he threw it between two defenders as Justin Jefferson was falling near the goal line. This is a similar play, man. This is incredible. Watch this play. Oh, throws it back shoulder. He does if he throws it out in front of Justin Jefferson, that's a pick. Watch this again, man. Watch this right here. This number, I think it's number two. I don't know, but he throws that out in front of Justin Jefferson. Pick. 100% a pick. And I don't know how many people were saying, oh, in my chat or just various people saying, hey, Kirk Cousins is going to go into a shell after that fumble. These are the kind of throws he was making. Look at this. Throws it back shoulder. Doesn't lead him into the defender that would have picked it. Right? Amazing throw. Here's the throw. Let's find the throw to Jordan Addison here. All right. I think it's this one. All right. So all 22 tape would have showed up uh, even a better. Now, we had some complaints about about. Kevin O'Connell's um, play calling the p- first game. Now, keep in mind, we pretty much abandoned the run in this game, uh, and we fell behind, so that didn't help either. But we still ran play action, and it still worked and in, in stuff. Here's, here's a play design where he's got three receivers out to the left and Addison on the far right. We run a screen, a bubble screen to... KJ Osborne on the left, and I forget if it was a tight end out there, but Justin Jefferson runs a post. All right. And Addison runs a post, but we fake the bubble screen. And then he pump fakes Justin Jefferson, and the safety crashes down, leaving Jordan Addison one on one. One on one, and you'll see um, Kirk Cousin, who has absolutely no pocket awareness, step up s- several steps to be able to make that throw to him. This the, and just and lets him get the ball. We know he he you do not want to overthrow a ball. It's much better to underthrow than overthrow a ball. He hits him, and the receiver, the defensive back, doesn't turn around. Jordan Addison comes back to the. Uh, he, holds up, catches the ball, and he and he's able to evade the defender and score a touchdown. Let's watch this play. Gets essentially Oh, this is a QB school. Sorry, you're probably hearing some volume. This is QB school. Committed to what I'm going to say the three eligible side and it creates this huge C26 here. Oh. A three eligible side and it creates this huge oh, you know what that was uh not to what i'm going to say not, the three uh, eligible Jefferson. side and it creates it this huge end. opportunity for the post so the safety came it, up so it was it was sorry i thought it was justin jefferson it was tj hawkinson that ran the post okay it's essentially so committed the to what i'm going to say the screen, three eligible side and it creates this huge TJ opportunity Hawkins, for the post. safety crashes down and Jordan Addison makes a play and dances into the end. So it's zone. a really well constructed play. Gets essentially so QB school talking about how well constructed the play was and how well it was performed by Kirk Cousins. Nothing wrong with this play. Nothing wrong with this play at all. Everything was immaculate, including you know you might want to complain about the blocking because look at what that I'm going to say the three eligible collapsed. side and it. Cr- now how many you know he could have ran. He could have ran for a ways with that. But no, he he does the right thing, throws it to Jordan Addison, gets a play. All right? Who knows? Maybe someone tucks that ball, doesn't have his eyes downfield, thinks he's going to get sacked, and runs with it. He steps up and delivers the ball. Nothing, nothing about this game would, with any common sense, would tell you Kirk Cousins played bad or was terrible or doesn't perform well on Monday night. If you go look at Kirk Cousins' stats, he, he he has played 17 
night games and he is um i think uh i think i think it worked out to 4500 yards 33 touchdowns so he, before this game he played in 17 primetime games in his career he's 43 4500 yards or 44 he's under 45 4400 yards 33 touchdowns and like 13 picks in 17 primetime games. That's a hell of a good season. That is a hell of a good season. There's, he's never had a, you know, he's had maybe one or two average or better defenses. The rest have been piss poor. 2018, 2019, 2019, he took that average defense a little bell of average, not much, but a little above average and took him to, the playoffs and won a game on the road and then lost to San Francisco on the road. So nothing, nothing about this game tells me Colin Cowherd should be able to tell, you know, tell us that Kirk cousins can't play. He's bad. Silly, just absolutely silly. Reminder to hit Hulk smash the like button and on your notifications i appreciate it thanks for listening skull vikings let's go get the san diego oh, i keep saying let's go get the chargers i keep calling them san diego chargers cue the music